Hi, I'm Nashlin, and thank you for watching iLearnToAnimate.com. Previously, we have created a bouncing ball animation like this. And this is a continuation from the previous tutorial we have. And right now, what we are going to do is to go through the second process, which is to allow the ball to move at a horizontal distance from left to right. So right now, I'm going to just do a very quick uh, shift on this camera so that it is on the left hand side something like this I'm not going to make the ball move too far away because it might look a little bit too over oh well we will try and see so what we got to do is again select the main not this rotate controller but the translate controller okay. we have already created um, keyframes over here and we have also created keyframes for the X axis. Um, in this case, yeah. So what I'm gonna do is go all the way to let's say about 100 frames, and I'm gonna press W to turn on the translate tool, and shift the ball a little over to here. Okay and that translate the z-axis if you look over here this is z-axis horizontally so if you play back over here this is how it looks like well it's not it's nothing wrong with this but we could further improve it to make it look nicer so what we can do is um hope you still remember that we require two things to make our animation look realistic one is the software skills to actually create the animation which we have done but we still need to apply principle of animation to make it look realistic so what should we apply here we should apply slow in and slow out why let me give a very quick explanation so we have a ball so it has a moving force that pushes it from the left to the right and you will come to an end you will stop on the right hand side and the reason being there is a friction on the floor so the energy energy from the moving force of the ball energy will be slowly dissipated because of the friction and come to a standstill with zero speed at the ball and eventually you can see that the ball will become will move at a faster distance but slowly reducing its speed until it reaches a standstill so how do we apply the principle of animation in slow in and slow out is by understanding that the ball move from a fast pace to a slow pace and eventually come to a stop okay with that in mind so what we got to do is we have to bring out our graph editor let's go to windows animation editor bring our graph editor and from here I'm going to just pull this higher what we can do is we are actually looking at so many of the keyframes over here we can isolate it if we know the axis that we are animating and of course we do because this is the translate Z this is a Z axis so what we can do is can just press on the highlight the blue color translate Z and we will see only this graph and if we want to have a better look at this we can select a marquee on this tool and you can press F to focus on this graph first thing first we will like to actually again give it free weight tangent so that we can manipulate okay it says that this is a non-weighted tangent uh, it's being locked 
so what we got to do is don't worry select both of these point go to the curves and allow it to be a weighted tangent once it's done you can see the handle is become bigger and we can give it a weighted tang free weighted tangent so we can from here on manipulate the hand handle how do I manipulate? I select the first vertice after that I highlight the handle and then left mouse to move it around you can see that interactively when I'm moving the ball is shifting accordingly too so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just make sure that at the end of it it's going to be coming to a stop very slowly because of the friction okay and for this um, maybe I'll just shift it maybe something like this we're gonna do some testing to make sure that it looks nice so let's see if it looks nice in this manner so once we are done we can just minimize this for a moment graph editor and go back all the way to the front and play back well it it stops almost very abruptly so we're going to try to tweak it a little but well, you have to use your a little bit of observation if you are unable to see for yourself you will have to compare it with the reference image you have found so what I'm going to do is I'm going to because it, it um, stops too abruptly I'm going to either adjust the curve or I lengthen the keyframes so let me just try with the first one by slowing it down a little which means like this making the curves more gentle something like this and let's play back again go all the way to the front and play Well, this looks much more realistic, right? And at the end, it slowly comes to a stop. So, if we would want to make it even nicer, we can try to experiment by holding down. In fact, we can hold down Shift and left click this area to highlight this keyframe, and we can shift it, give it a longer time frame. We'll bring it to frame 1 to 0 okay so that's frame 1 to 0 by lengthening it and let's just play back again if it looks much more subtle yes because the ball does not comes does not comes to a complete stop immediately it will linger a little and that's where you can actually um, let the time let, gives you a subtle stop to it so there you are that's the fastest way that you can actually create a horizontal movement to your bouncing ball to make it come to a standstill if you really like to have more subtle details what I would suggest is you can lengthen just by maybe another 30 frames or so 150 and sometimes the ball is uneven so when even when it comes to a standstill it might still roll back a little bit so we can always try to experiment let's go to 10 frames and maybe just push it backward just a tiny little bit okay so let's see how it looks like can you see that it, there's a subtle details that it comes to stop maybe just roll back okay if you think that the rolling back is still too fast delay even further by giving more frames more timing okay this is also an animation principle of animation which is a timing you will give it more timing to make it look realistic it's either you can 
increase the timing or you can reduce the distance move um, by the ball from from this point back to this point so how can we reduce further reduce we can take a look at this value this is 54.666 and let's go all the way to 140 54.315 so 666 maybe we can give it to 550 just a rough guess okay something that is smaller amount and now if you were to play back you might find that it is very subtle but subtle animation if it's being rendered out it will be it will make it quite realistic when we are viewing it in the video okay but of course don't make it too subtle until there is not much you can't really see a difference so we might consider 450 instead 0.45 okay and we can actually just bring back our graph editor and take a look over here press F to focus again if you wish to zoom it in F okay so you can see this is how it looks like okay um, we might want to break this tangent reason being this handle is actually controlling too much of it so we can just like this pull it back so that it's moving normally in this manner okay let's try again okay we might want to bring back our graph editor just to do some editing from here as we can see there is actually this handle which is actually going way too far on the right so I will break this tangent and pull this nearer towards where it should look like okay looking from here you can see that the ball actually rolls back just a little bit tiny little bit to add the subtleties so what we can do is right now I'll just pause it and pull this all the way over here so I can see zoom this in all the way from the start okay, it's been a little bit way off just okay so this will be how I frame my animation and we will just do a play bars from here same thing I will click on the show, uncheck NURBS and I'm going to do a play plus um, using the same previous settings. I'll just put a 0 to A and play plus. Play Blast is a very fast way to preview animation and at the same time to see how your animation looks like um, in real time. Okay, so this is how it looks like. Okay. That's it for this process, which is the moving the horizontal distance for a bouncing ball. In the next process, we will cover how to rotate the ball so that the bouncing ball looks slightly more realistic when it's bouncing and when
when it rolls back, you will rotate back a little bit more. Thank you for watching islandjournimate.com. See you soon.